Two of the great branches of modern physics, quantum mechanics and Einstein's general theory of relativity, don't fit together. General relativity is a theory of gravity in which space, time, matter and energy are considered to be continuous quantities. Quantum mechanics, on the other hand, is based on the idea that energy comes in indivisible units known as quanta, and it currently has nothing to say about gravity. This incompatibility isn't a problem in most situations. We can still build electronic devices that are based on the principles of quantum mechanics, and for most practical purposes, in astronomy for instance, general relativity works just fine. The difficulties start when we think about what happens in extreme environments such as the vicinity and interior of black holes and the universe itself in the first split second of its existence. Quantum mechanics is no help because it deals with only three of the four known fundamental forces of nature, electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces, and general relativity, which does deal with gravity, breaks down in situations where the gravitational field is so intense that quantum fluctuations of space and time start to play an important role. What we need is a quantum theory of gravity, but that's easier said than done. Despite what we might think, gravity is an incredibly weak force. It seems strong to us because it quickly pulls us down to the ground if we jump, and it holds the planets in their orbits around the sun, but this illusion of strength is because we're used to seeing the gravitational effects of large masses. The gravitational force with which two electrons attract each other is a trillion, trillion, trillion times weaker than the electromagnetic force that pushes them apart. In fact, quantum gravitational effects become significant only at distances less than what's known as the Planck length, about a hundred million trillion trillionth of a meter. Only when we get down to that incredibly tiny scale would quanta of the gravitational field, hypothetical particles known as gravitons, come out of hiding. Even though there's no way we can produce gravitons and carry out experiments with them in today's particle accelerators, theoreticians are busy at work trying to build a mathematical framework to describe quantum gravity. Two of the most popular approaches are called M-theory and loop quantum gravity. M-theory is what's known as a theory of everything because it aims to bring together all the fundamental interactions, electromagnetism, the strong and weak forces and gravity under a single mathematical umbrella. First introduced by the American physicist Ed Witten in 1996, M-theory unites five different versions of string theory. In string theory, the basic constituents of nature are not point-like particles, but one-dimensional strings. What we perceive to be particles are actually vibrations of loops of string, each with its own characteristic frequency. Loop quantum gravity, in contrast, makes no attempt to unify gravity with the other basic interactions in nature. Instead, it focuses on trying to quantize the gravitational field while keeping it separate from the other forces. In loop quantum gravity, the smooth space-time of general relativity is replaced by nodes and links to which quantum properties are assigned. So whereas M-theory and string theories generally study objects within space-time, loop quantum gravity is interested in the quantization of space-time itself. And there are other differences. M-theory needs 10 dimensions in which to work and implies the existence of a whole set of new particles, so-called supersymmetric particles, in addition to those already known in the standard model. Loop quantum gravity doesn't work in higher dimensions and doesn't recognize supersymmetry. Theorists in both camps, loop and string, continue to develop their ideas. In parallel, in high-energy physics laboratories around the world, researchers are looking for clues as to how the universe actually behaves on the smallest of scales.